All right, let's take a look at an example using motional EMF. So in this example, I've got a bar on two conductive rods connected to a resistor in a magnetic field that's going into the board. And so what we're going to wind up doing is applying a force to this bar to the right. And there's an applied force to the right here, uh, and the bar is then moving to the right. It's got a, some sort of rightward velocity. And let's assume here that it's moving with a constant velocity. So if that's the case, we've got positive charges inside of this thing, and those positive charges are moving in this direction. So into the board, they feel an upwards force. The top end of this bar should be charged uh, positively, and the bottom end would be negatively. But here, since the charges actually have somewhere to go, they're actually going to be pushed around like as an EMF. So what we derived before was that the EMF was equal to uh, BLV, the magnetic field, times the length of bar that is inside of the magnetic field, which in this case would be the spacing between the two bars, times the velocity. All right, so as the bar is moving like this, this effectively is the same as a resistor circuit, a resistor and a battery circuit, where you have this bar is acting as the EMF, acting as the battery. And so we can redraw this. as an equivalent circuit like this. It's just equal to, these are effectively equivalent situations. Now, if this thing is moving at a constant velocity, that also means that there's going to be a backwards uh, force in the opposite direction. And remember that the force in that direction is going to be equal to uh, ILB, because that's the Lorentz force uh, uh, current is then induced in this. Because we now have a current flowing through the wire, that current going in this direction is going to feel a force backwards due to the situation. So there's also a backwards magnetic force here. All right, so with some of this here, we can start evaluating a few more things. We can figure out the amount of current flowing in the circuit just uh, using Ohm's law. And then using that, we can determine how strong the magnetic force is, and therefore how hard we would have to be pushing forwards to maintain this constant speed. Uh, let's take a look. All right, so we found the current here as BLV over R. That's just the EMF, which we found divided by R. And if we substitute that in to figure out the equation for the force, well, we get this expression right here, is that the force, magnetic force backwards, is B squared L squared V over R. Now, this would be regardless of the, uh, if it's, whether it's being applied a force to it or not, if it was just moving along this bar, this would be the magnetic force from it. Um, however, we had stated originally that we we're applying a forwards force that is causing it to uh, move, and we're moving it at constant speeds. So that means that our force would also be equal to this. Now, the motion of this bar is acting like a battery, and that battery needs to have energy come from somewhere. Typical batteries use chemical energy, but in this situation, it would actually be this force forward is what's generating the energy. Uh, and so the amount of work that you're putting into it should be equal to the amount of energy that is being uh, taken out through the resistor. So the power delivered to the bar as you're pushing it this direction should be equal to the power consumed by the resistor. So let's calculate both of those things here. So recall, power is equal to the current times the voltage. Uh, so what it's going to be is this is our current, and the implied voltage, well, in this case, is the EMF, which is BLV. So it's just going to be this times BLV. And that's the power consumed by the uh, resistors. This is the energy that's leaving the circuit as heat in the resistor. And now this equation is for the magnetic force backwards, but this is also for the forwards magnetic, the forwards force that's being applied because those two forces would have to be equal if it's traveling at a constant velocity. And because of that, well, we know that power is equal to the, uh, the work done divided by the time, which is here equal to the force times the distance over time, or distance over time is the speed. So a way that we can write uh, the power is if we have a constant force, that it's just equal to the force times the velocity. So we can take the force here that we have already, multiply by the velocity, 
and we get that the input power due to the force being exerted on the bar is exactly equal to v squared l squared v over r times v, which is the same thing that we've got right here. So here's an example. We can look at the power being dissipated uh, as well as being put into the system this way. Moving bars like this is one way that you can generate electrical energy. Um, it's not really the typical way that's done. Often we have rotating things so that we get uh, alternating current so it switches positive and negative rather than this, which just causes current flow in one single direction. But of course, the bar has to stop eventually, so if you were to then like move it back in the other direction, you would also similarly get alternating current. All right, thanks.